Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Azimuth Ride the Winds. It's by Taito Games. It's for two to four players. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes to play the game and is for ages 10 and up. In the game Azimuth, you're going to be playing as a castaway and you're going to be on a raft. Your objective is to get across the ocean and use the wind to your benefit by moving rafts to get to the other side. Once you get to the other side, you're going to find your own little lighthouse house in your own little island and if you can do that before your opponents do you're going to win the game however your opponents also have their own rafts and their own wind and they're going to try and manipulate the rafts so that you will not be able to get across and they will if they can manage to do so before you they're going to win but if you can do so you're going to win instead all right let's go ahead and take a look here we have all the components for azimuth and as you can see there's quite a bit you've got the box here you've got a bag here we're going to be putting the components in you've got the rule book and you've got the board the board looks similar to Suro because you're going to be using pieces to move around the board similar in style. You're also going to have these wind tokens and we did four different colors for four different players along with these raft tokens that are also going to be used the same for the same thing. You've got these additional uh, pieces here that you can choose to use as an additional option of the game playing which you're going to be, be able to use other people's winds, the little coconuts. You've got your characters that you'll be using to move across the board, their islands along with their towers, and another optional piece or semi-optional piece which is an island that can be used for a four player game or is needed for the two and three player game modes. All right, let me go ahead and tell you how it's played. Azimuth has a couple of different styles of play, and the first part begins by actually placing all of your rafts face down and flipping them face up, along with the setup as to where you're going to be putting your piece of the uh, puzzle, which is going to be your little uh, lighthouse here, putting on the opposite side of the end of the board, and your character on the other side, and you're trying to get across. Now, what you're first going to do is be placing down your wind markers around the board, wherever you so choose, and everybody's going to do that until all of their wind has been placed, and then you're going to have the option to move wind pieces for another point of, portion of the game. When you're doing that, you're going to be either moving it to the left or to the right in a 90 degree angle, or simply moving the wind from one tile to another piece, provided there is uh, the ability to do so, or if there is no raft in area, you can actually move it diagonally as well. When you do that, you'll be able to move portions of different rafts along with the color based on the type of wind. You're also going to have the optional uh, ability to use these coconuts here to move other people's wind and move, rotating theirs to move their tiles along the board. Of course your objective is just to get your character across so your other ability is actually to take your little dude here and sail from one raft or swim from one raft to another raft provided it's your color. Getting to the end is the most important part and sometimes you'll be using this island here which is going to be either optional or non-optional depending on the game of the mode of play and and you'll be getting on that top of that and then moving your character off of that onto another piece of raft which is yours and if you can get to the end you're going to win let's go ahead and show you the setup for a four player game and then a couple turns of play so here we have the setup for azimuth ride the winds for a four player base game and as you see you go ahead and give every single player four wins and of course there are rafts minus uh, two one's gonna be discarded and one will be put over here on your character the rest will be here and you're gonna shuffle them up and put them down on the board in this square uh, of course for a two to three player game it's gonna be different and this is is actually optional this island where you can actually hop on hop off of if you choose not to use that you don't have to if you don't want to um, as you can see too each player is going to set up their character and their island on opposite sides of the board and if you go ahead and set their island right here which is gonna be this plus here these three are the spaces in which you can get to to win the game you're gonna set your character on the opposite end and you would do that for every single player on the game making it nice and easy to set up and of course, before this occurs though, before you go ahead and select your places, you're going to actually flip these little pieces over here because this will determine where all the rafts are going to be because you're only able to step on your own color of raft. After each of these have been flipped over, of course, you're gonna place all these down as well as placing down your rafts on the opposite end. And now you know where you need to go. This black character needs to get to one of these three spaces to jump off and get to their island. They're in red and of course, yellow and blue. You've got your four winds here and you've got your four coconuts which are going to be used for moving other people's wins and the game has basically two phases after setup the first phase is simply to choose a player to go first we'll choose black and they're going to go ahead and place their wind and whenever you place a wind down you're going to move all of the colors that are adjacent to the wind that are that color so black will move of these four these two black forward now whenever you move you're going to actually be placing tiles on top of uh, other uh, uh, rafts on top of other rafts provided there's no character there if there was it would be actually under 
underneath. Um, so the next player will get to go and place their next wind. Maybe they'll place it like that. If they did, they could move this. But of course, you want to try and get your character to the other end of the board. So you would move just simply this guy here. Uh, the red player is going to get to go next. We'll place that there, moving these pieces just like that. And the blue player is going to go ahead and place, let's see, right there, moving this character up. And that's going to be the basic idea of the game. Players are going to continually try and place their wind, moving their rafts up. So this is actually going to be like that. And eventually, there's only four of them here, eventually they're going to end up not having any more of these uh, wind pieces left. So I'm going to go ahead and fast mode this up, Oop, place this right there, to try and increase the speed. So this is actually going to go underneath. And uh, the next one here, I'm going to move this. This will go, yep, this will go up here. Checks to see there's a blue, so that blue will actually going to go here, and it's actually going to go underneath here. Bam. And you continue doing that. Making sure to place your wind, you want to make sure you have enough wind tiles placed on the board, so that way you're going to be able to get, to a, get on the other side. So placing one right here might be good, or maybe like one right there, moving this just like that. And let's see, I can get a red one, maybe move that there. Whenever you go ahead and place something like this wind here, uh, you're gonna have to look at the bottom wind, uh, bottom tile, if that's a red, you actually move that right here, right? And there's no other red, so that's irrelevant now. Um, blue, where does blue wanna go? Blue needs something maybe right here. And you're gonna look to find the lowest blue, or the nearest blue, which is right there, moving that back. Any other blues, there isn't, okay. And finally, maybe black will be right here. Is there any blacks on this? There is, so this will do that. And no other blacks around, right? Oh no, sorry, that's not right. That's not a good spot to put because this is actually a spot for a raft. Maybe, let's see here, how about this space there? Okay, and we'll just do our little finishing touches here. Uh, this space here, is there anything? Nope. And got a blue and a red. We'll just go ahead and place them down really quick. Like that, moving this here and this one. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Now you've got all of the wind pieces placed down, right? So there's no more wind left. So all you have uh, to use is you're gonna have coconuts, the ability to move from one raft to another raft. So for instance, so that can't actually be there, it'd be right there. So for instance, if there's a blue raft here, you can actually move over here or the ability to rotate your own wind, 90 degrees. That would be on your turn, you could do that. When you rotate the wind, it's going to then do, this, do the same thing as though you were to place it, and it would also move all the tiles in a specific direction. You could choose to use these coconuts, like I was talking about before, to simply move somebody else's wind. So if it was, for instance, yellow's turn, and they wanted to use a coconut, they could actually maneuver blues 90 degrees, and they could simply move all the blue rafts in a direction. Uh, they wouldn't be able to use their own for the coconut, but it might be useful to do so. The player is going to continue to do that. So let's go ahead and start with um, this player here, the black player. And he is going to simply, uh, let's see here, he's got a red right there and a blue right there. So it'd be helpful if there was a blue one right there, but there isn't. Uh, he could also choose to move a wind. So for instance, he can move that wind right there, which is a useful move because it's going to allow him to move this up here. And that's going to get him farther along the board. Uh, this player over here is just yellow, is going to move this piece forward one, which will then move these pieces just like that. And then we've got over here, which is the red player. And the red player will, let's see what he wants to do. Hmm. The red player could move this piece like that, and thus they move his raft just like that. And we'll continue over here. We've got the blue player. The blue player is going to rotate this piece here and move this piece over here. And finally, we're back to the black player again. And maybe the black player wants to hmm, move this wind over here. I don't know exactly what he wants to do. It's a tough choice. Sometimes you can't make make a decision. Sometimes your decisions are not useful. Um, like for instance, right here, he can't really move this piece of this wind this way because there's a character already on this board. If there wasn't, he'd be able to do that. But because there isn't, he can't. Uh, so he could just choose to uh, move this move this wind piece over here. All right, and that's the basic idea of the game though. You're gonna be trying to move your rafts from one side of the board to the other. You can do things like moving from one same color to another same color, provided it's your color. Uh, you could also move somebody else's wind with coconuts. Or what's really interesting too is like yellow, yellow could choose to move right there onto that island piece this is an optional action in the game. And the island he can actually move to any of the side pieces provided it's their color, which could be useful because then he could do this, move that, move that there, and move to here if he wanted to. And once one of the players was able to get their raft to their side, 
um, maybe not, 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 not that one. This would be, this would be over here actually. Get to their side in one of these three columns here, then they'd be able to move on to their island and win the game. And that is the basic idea of how to play Azimuth Ride the Winds. So that's Azimuth in a nutshell. You're basically playing a game similar to Suro, but instead of moving around the board based on the lines, you're gonna be moving using your wind tiles. The wind is gonna be very, very important as to how you place it, and if not, you can get stuck. And that, partially a problem, because in your first game, you're not gonna really grasp what the best move is, and so I can see how that could turn off people to start with. But as you start to play more and more, you'll see the strategy and where you place the wind and where it matters. As you saw in my example, I wasn't really thinking as much because I'm trying to set the game up and just play it along and show you how it works so black got stuck there a little bit at the end now of course eventually the game will work itself to where you're able to make certain moves or you have to think in many many turns in advance to try and gather where you need to go sometimes maybe if you can't play anything for your specific piece you can move somebody else's piece and thusly be able to move your own piece on another turn or using somebody else's wind tiles uh, another thing to always keep in mind is that you can move your wind from one side to another side without turning it and thusly moving pieces forward or uh, to the side on the board. So it has that aspect, it has that moving aspect. It's nice with the fact that there's not a lot of games like this out there. I don't see a lot of games that involve moving your pieces around. Sur is the only thing that really comes to mind, and even that is not the same as this game. This has its own unique style of mechanisms, uh, mechanics, as well as the type of theme to it. It does feel like you're a shipwrecked survivor and you're doing your very, very best to get across, but for some reason the wind is just not <laughs> not in your favor some most of the time because your opponents are like, well, you can't go there, I can't let you beat there. But then you find that st strategy that's going to let you get right across. Like one of the first games we played, somebody was able to sneak across through because nobody else put wins in certain areas, and they were able to get around the corner and sneak into their island. Now, in a two-player and a three-player game, it's going to be a different setup, but it still functions the same way as far as how you're moving around. It's not as crowded, I suppose, as the four-player game, but if you like more hectic style, you're gonna like this one. It does have that lifeboats feel as well, where you have to choose to mess with somebody if you can't do, you can't progress your own track, which has a nice feel to it, but it's still a little bit of a take that. Um, it's definitely gonna be one of those games for abstract people. I had a great time playing this game myself, and there's a lot of sharp, there's a little bit of analysis paralysis sometimes, because if you have that type of gamer, they're like, really wanna make the best move possible, and it has that ability, but you could simply just move around the board if you wanted to, until you get to the end, which you, you're guaranteed you need to do it eventually and provided that you play the right strategy though you can make it a lot quicker and you're going to get better the more and more you play this game overall i like the game i like the different components as to how you can add new different aspects to it especially the island in the middle i highly suggest adding that it gives you more especially for four players it gives you more availability to move around the board makes it easier for newer players and providing the coconuts as well to move other people's wins very very useful overall i really enjoyed the game it's an abstract movie pulling out specifically for my abstract gamer friends and if you like this style of a game, I highly suggest you check out Azimuth Ride the Winds. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos. If you need to like, subscribe, and comment, it all does help. We do greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. That's the blog post, giveaways, Kickstarter list, and more, as well as checking out Azimuth Ride the Winds on Kickstarter right now. If you like abstract games, if you like a little bit of take that without actually having to take that and actually just moving them around on the board. It has a nice abstracty feel with that Ciro thing going on with it. It's really fun, I like that aspect. Um, as well as checking out uh, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek and our giveaway currently with AEG. We are giving away Space Base. You can check that out on our website. All right guys, that's all I got this time. And as always, I look forward to seeing you next time.